You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. That's what a lot of people don't see. You don't see the behind the scenes stuff. You only see the, oh, he's in the cage, he's fighting. You see your way in looking ripped and that. You see your fight, you see your interviews and that. You think, oh, he's just being paid loads of dough for that. Nah, we haven't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we haven't, lad. <laughs> uh, we just go back to the gym now. And like, as you can see from me, blowing up in weight. And then have to work our way back down and get another fight to carry on paying the bills. I'm like, I'm getting, I'm getting less now for the UFC than I did for me. Some of my cage warriors fights. That's mad to I think took that, a pay cut for this fight. Still want me pictures and videos, you rat. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't the hardest in my school. I wasn't the hardest in my year. You know what I mean, I was just a little kid. Mm-hmm. I just started doing something and put me heart, mind, and soul into it, lad. And I'm where I am now. Mm-hmm. I hate people who put personas and that on, lad. Yeah. Like, I hate Colby Covington, lad. Why? Don't know if you know him or not. Yeah, yeah. Lad, I hate him, lad. Why? I hope he gets hit by a bus. <laughs> lad, he's just proper annoying. Like, I've been told he's got a ghostwriter and all that, lad. Doesn't even come up with all his own stuff he comes out with. What? Like, it's all an act, isn't it? It's all an act. Everything he does behind the cameras, it's, he's not like that. That's a mega money fight. I've been asked before who's the one the one fight who you'd um, you'd want to fight. And you're always saying him because of the money involved. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a pay-per-view. You're gonna get part of the pay-per-view. You're gonna wanna fight McGregor. But as I've said, that's me the next few years, lad. We're on today's <laughs> guest. We've got Paddy the Baddy. How are you, brother? I'm good, lad. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. It's an yeah. um, absolute pleasure, mate. Like, buzzing for you. Like, I've interviewed over 200 people now. And I don't kind of get a buzz anymore, but I was buzzing for you today. Like, I've, you've been all over social media, internet over the last two or three weeks. Like, it. But you've been about for ages prior to that, but you've made world headlines now. Now you've arrived, man. How are you feeling? Lad, I always said this was going to happen. Literally, from day one. Um, I always said, I think I've said that in interviews before I had my first fight, but I said it years ago, give me one fight, one post-fight interview, and everyone will be talking about me, lad, and that's what happened. So, to be honest, there hasn't, like, it's done my beard's head in more, and some of the, like, some of my mates head in more when, like, we're, we're out somewhere and people are asking me for photos, because I'm used to it, lad. I've, I, I knew this was coming. I've always seen it in my future, and, it's only going to get bigger and better. Do you practice a lot of attraction? Um, so, so, to be honest, because I don't like read into it and go over stuff yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. but I, I tell, I say what I'm going to do and it, it happens. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, because I, I, when I follow Conor McGregor five, six years ago, his presence, his aura, everything he says, you believed him. You thought, this guy's on the path, his frequency, his energy, everything was kind of in line and everything he ever set out to do, he achieved. Like, I get that same feeling with you. Like everything you say, I believe you. Like I genuinely do. Like everything you've put in existence already, and everything that you're saying you're going to do, like the fighting and field and that, I believe you're going to be the one that's doing it, and you believe it most. I think. And I think not just all the scousers are behind you, but I think everybody in the world. That is fucking unbelievable. The yeah, lad. Like some of the mad messages I've had from people all over the world, and I can't even like now, lad. I can't even keep up with them. Where they've made that new account, lad. The message requests are just <laughs> off the chart, lad. But I, I know I'm going to make Anfield happen. I've always said it. Like, whenever I'm there and I watch the game, I was there last Wednesday, I was there Saturday. I'm just looking at the pitch, like, in the night there, how many seats to fit on there. As I'm watching the match, I'm thinking, lad, it'd be heavy in here. Because, especially now with that new stand, that stand's getting, like, renovated, in it? So, lad, when that gets done, there's even more seats in there. And then the seats on the ground, I'd probably do just a bit less than Wembley or something. You know what I mean? That's class. It's unbelievable. I always like to go back to the start of my guest, brother. Where you grew up and how it all began. Um, well, I grew up in in Eighton, lad. Uh, well, Greystone by Village Lane and that. Nah, not a typically bad area or nothing. It's uh, 
like when uh, some of my mates from the gym comes comes to ours like, for the very first time, it's funny that uh, from like Anfield and Wavertown and you know, all stuff like that, all over the place, Park Road and that. And I always say, my daddy, lad, times are hard, times are hard. And the first ever time they all come to ours, they all started laughing their heads off. I was like, Cornell, you live in this house, lad, and you say times are hard. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and what was it that Ellis called me, lad? Ellis called me the Fresh Prince of Iton. <laughs> what was just, the hairstyle like then? Uh, proper skinhead lad when I first oh, started MMA and that proper skinhead um, yeah I didn't even think about growing my hair then but now I look back at my head and I was like what was you up to lad like what's going on with your head there proper big head like two and a one three mm-hmm. and a two and uh, I just looked after it now <laughs> I couldn't go back to that hairdo now but, lad, that's one of the things that everyone's been going on about you need a haircut you need this I'd ever wanted an haircut I'd get an haircut I don't want to get an haircut. I go to the hairdressers, lad. I get the layers put in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. How is uh, your school? Um, Cardellina, lad. All boys school. I uh, went to St. Margaret Mary's before that, but everyone just talks about the seniors, don't they? Cardellina. A uh, few people went to our school, lad. Like, I'm sure David Price did. I know Gerard did. You know what I mean? So, bit of a bit of a mad one in all boys school, like, but at the same time, because there was no girls there, funny stuff happened, but didn't happen when when there was girls there because people would be too embarrassed and stuff like that so school was funny I, I didn't like it but now when you look back at it my dad always says you'll miss it when you haven't got it and he's right because I know you spoke about school the teacher says you wouldn't make it to anything and if you don't stick in because you, you never really bothered your ass um, yeah I, I like to have a laugh in school lad, mm-hmm. you know what I mean I think everyone did but if you're always telling me I was an academic, I was this, I was that. I mean, I was smart. I need to concentrate on my schoolwork. And then it's just one day I got caught selling that, selling Lucas Aid and discos and galaxies and that. And uh, of them so true, it's like they were the one with the most profit on them. <laughs> um, and I got Nick selling one day and I got put in one of the teacher's offices. And she was like, oh, what are you doing this for? And, and I'd sold from year seven anyway, so it wasn't like I was selling for that reason. But... I said to her, oh, I'm, I'm paying for my gym, blah, blah, this and that. She was like, oh, you don't, you don't want to do that, Patrick. Uh, you're too small. You're too small for all that. You're an academic. You need to concentrate on your schoolwork. I was just like, yeah, go on, sound. Obviously, went back to the gym that night. Just carried on doing it as I was. And I've been invited back into the school since and that to talk to the kids and that. So, and that teacher was there. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. Say sorry. No, because they probably can't even remember it. Yeah, I'd fucking chinned them. <laughs> it's like, look what I'm doing now, you know what I mean? Like, that just shows you, but in school, and that like, because you don't fully, some people don't fully suit and have to jump through the hoops like everybody else, like, everybody's different. Like, you've clearly pro- proved that like, anybody can be anything as long as you believe and, and work your fucking ass off. Yeah, that, that's what I always say, lad. I always say, like, I was, I was a small kid, I wasn't a big kid, you know what I mean? I think that's helped me now because I started saying them when I was smaller, you know what I mean? So where I started saying them when I was smaller, I got used to being with bigger people. And now that I'm one of the bigger ones, I can be like I can work both ways. I can be pushing the pace on people or getting it pushed on me where I was the smaller man. Um I always say it now, kids nowadays, they just need to get into some sort of not even a martial art, some sort of sport. It gives you a bit of self discipline and it teaches you that the hard work you put in. You get rewards out of it, and that's what you do with life. What age did you start going to martial arts? Was it martial arts you started first? Um, I just started MMA. Straight away? 15. Was it we bullied or anything? Or was there any trouble? No, I just... just thought I'd go to this gym one day because I watched UFC. Uh-huh. I watched I watched Kyle Wilson, lad from Bayaz. Um, was in the youth club one day, lad, when he was like 14, and he put mm-hmm. this fight on. Diego Sanchez versus Clay Guida. And lad, it was heavy. Like, they're just having a right to go at each other, throwing up a cut from this close and then just swinging air houses at each other. And I was like, this is sick, this. This is a belt of this. And like, I started having a little watch of it. And the first one I stayed up and watched live was Belfort versus Franklin. Belfort knocked him out in about a minute. And I went for a run at like six in the morning after it. And then from then on, it was just like, oh, I need to start going here, I need to start going here. And then one of the lads who was mates with Jay is... Sister was with a lad called Joe, Joe Neal. He's got a gym now called The Lab. Um, he used to train on the next gen and fight in next gen, so he recommended I went there. I went there on the 20th of January 2010. 
and as they say, the rest is history. What was it like first time getting punched and hit? And I lad, the first night I was in, I got beat up by a woman. <laughs> was Did it lad. Molly? Was it? <laughs> no, it wasn't Molly, lad. It was a. Uh, I think her name was Millie, though. Now that you say it, she was from Brazil, lad. And as I say, I was a small kid, so I got put with her in the sparring for the tie, and lad, she fucking battered me. Like she proper put it on me. She didn't give like give give a fuck that it was my first session. Lad, she uh-huh. put it on me. I can remember being stood by the by the um, the desk, and there was a pillar next to it, and there was three coaches stood behind there. And she went, she went to throw something and done a spinning back fist and hit me right on the jaw. And three coaches went, ooh. Oh, like that meme. <laughs> lad, that's what it was like, lad. Straight. And, like, it was funny. <laughs> Just, I got beat up by a woman. Oh, she ended up coming back. It was like I, when I was a bit better and I moved either. You know I mean? <laughs> Can't put it on me uh, like that. Don't expect to get it put back on you. Yeah. Did you have an actual ability for it straight away or was it something for you kept working on? Yeah. For the you? grappling, I did. I had natural ability when like, I jumped in the first class and nearly guillotined someone right away. And one of the lads who was coaching the class, Danny Sweeney, who was a pro at the time, um, he like pointed at I can remember him like pointing at and touching someone and going like that, like so when it's his first session. But I was just a flexible kid and I had no quit in me. Like I still haven't. But I was just a natural when it comes to jujitsu, and I still am. Because even when I was lighter, people say when you're on top of me, I feel like you're about twice the size. Mm-hmm. Like that's what other people still say to me. And I'd probably say it even more now because my fat comes. That's mad though, like, because you've had a great amateur career. Was it nine and nine, nine and zero? Yeah. yeah, nine and zero. Um, How was your first fight? I took it on a week's notice. Yeah, one of the one of the lads, Aaron, um, got injured a week out, and I come in and done rounds. And Paul said to me, "Do you want to take this fight next week?" And he'd already beat one of the lads from the gym, Matty. So I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "I'm sure, yeah," because the fellow was twenty four, and he'd already beat one of the lads from the gym who was a bit bigger than me. And um, I was like, "Yeah, go ahead, sign that." And I was just, I was sad. I weren't nervous at all or not. And it was just, it was like, I, I, as soon as I won that one fight, or even like I, I, I had that first fight, I just knew it was what I was meant to do. And how old were you? 16. 16. Fighting a kid at 24. Yeah. How was it, like, training for martial arts and training for fights? Is there a lot of sacrifice that comes with that? Yeah. A lot of sacrifice. Like, that's what a lot of people don't see. You don't see the behind the scenes stuff. You only see the... Oh, he's in the cage, he's fighting. You see your way in looking ripped and that. You see your fight, you see your interviews and that. You think, God, he's just being paid loads of dough for that. Nah, we haven't. <laughs> yeah. We haven't, lad. <laughs> we just go back to the gym now. And, like, as you can see from me, blowing up in weight. And then have to work our way back down and get another fight to carry on paying the bills. So, when did you turn pro after your ninth fight? Yeah, uh, when I was 17. You turn pro at 17? Yeah. That's at a young age, no? You turn pro Yeah, that, yeah. It's like, I don't think you can turn pro at 17 anymore. But there was just no one left for me to fight. When I was an amateur, I put it in. Um, there was something called the Cage Warriors Forum. Just like, like Facebook and Instagram and that now. And I put a thing on the amateur forum saying, when I think I was 5 and up, I am the best amateur bantamweight in the country. Who can dispute this? And lad, it had the most ever replies on an amateur forum. Like, even from a young age, I've been getting under people's skin, lad. And he was just putting names in and I was just beating them all. So I went, nah, no, no, all the names that I'd been put in the list and like all lists on there, I'd beat them. Or they'd been beat by someone else who I'd already beat in the process. And I just went pro. My first fight was against some crab. Um, <laughs> was, lad? Like... Journeymen in boxing aren't that bad. Mm-hmm. Like, they survive. Most journeymen in MMA are terrible. But this chicken was like, we call him chicken because he nearly choked someone out of our gym a few, like, a few a year before he fought me or something. He nearly chicken someone out of our gym. So we call him chicken. His name's Nathan Thompson. And um, he was like, I don't know, he was like four and 21 or something when I fought him. But he fought all sorts of people like that, like higher weights and stuff like that. And I just, I think I took him down and elbowed him. It was the first fight I was allowed to elbow, because you can't elbow to your pro. I just took him down and elbowed him, and he had a big hematoma on his head. 
I was like, yeah, these elbows are sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that feeling then? Because the people I've spoke to who have watched your fights in the past, like, they say you can take a punch. Do you enjoy getting hit? It's not that I enjoy it, I just don't mind it. <laughs> it's a fucked up feeling though. Yeah, it's, it's not like... Like I get my own dad in the gym for in the gym all the time by me coaches, you know what I mean? Ellis and Paul and Adam and Chris. They're all just like, Lad, stop just having it. Because <laughs> I'll get it with a punch and I'm like, oh, he's one up on me there. And, I'll, and then, like, say I get it with another one, I'll just go, met, boom, and I'll just step in and start throwing, you know what I mean? And I have need to get out of that habit, really, because in the end, it's got to go wrong because it always does. But for now, it's not. So, Enjoy that. I, yeah, I, I enjoy it. Like, I watched, I watched me fight back for the second time last night. And lad, I enjoyed watching it. So, like, obviously, people enjoy watching it. So, I'd rather have a fight like that than lying on top of someone mm-hmm. three rounds. Because mm-hmm. that's what I used to do when I was amateur. I was just mainly a wrestler, grappler, like, jiu-jitsu. So, I just used to take everyone down and sit on top of them and try and submit them. Does that get boring for you now? So so it can do like, but when it gets to, when it comes when I'm come up, come up against someone who's just a a flat out striker lad, he's getting put on his back. <laughs> mm-hmm. It goes without saying because yeah. I know I can. A lot of people in the division, I know for a fact, I could take down, submit, or take down and ground pound out. But people like Vendramini, I do want to stand and test myself against people like that. Yeah, because you've had a great career before. You joined the UFC. Like you've already sold out the Echo how many times? Twice. Yeah, twice. The first time I didn't proper sell it out, the second two times, yeah. Well, it's unbelievable. Was Dan Tong not one of your undercards? Was he not an amateur at, at no, one that point? Was on, that was when I fought on OMAC. That was like one of my first three pro fights. Was it? Yeah. Or oh, it might have even been when I was main event as an amateur. Love Dan, man. Great guy. Shout out to Dan Tong. Um, <laughs> so, is uh, when you won the Cage Warriors, Cage Warriors world title, how was that feeling for you? Well, that was something that I... That was unbelievable. I mean, especially when it didn't... In Liverpool, mm-hmm. like, like even everything in a bar that was sick, lad. Just winning the belt, the celebrations afterwards. But that was my downfall at the time, you know what I mean? Like, so looking back now, I'm glad it happened. But at the time, should have had my head more screwed on, but I didn't. Did you slap a bit? Yeah, I did. Boozing? Yeah, just all the time, man. <laughs> Drinking Friday, Saturday, Sunday, going to the gym on like two hours, kid. Just hanging around with tools. Yeah. People that were just there. Uh, Using you? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's easy done though. Yeah, it is. So that's why I always say now I'm, I'm glad that happened when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, like I won the belts, but I won my next fight. So I just carried on like that for another six months or five months till I fought again. And then I lost. And then obviously I had to reevaluate everything and put everything into perspective. And that was when I come back and I won with the flying triangle in the echo. And then but it broke my hand and another sillyly again. I fought three months post-surgery, so my hand was still proper cabbaged. Mm-hmm. And again, that's another thing when I look back at hindsight now, though, because the amount of people telling me to pull out, my coach, my dad, my bed, my family, all my teammates, just pull out, lad, just pull out. And like I felt like I had a sense of, I, I had to do it because it was in the echo because I was the main event people had all bought tickets to come and watch me you know what I mean mm-hmm. so felt like I had to do it even though I was injured and I was that close from winning you know what I mean with a rear naked choke yeah. even though I had one hand do you not have to cut 12 kilos or something or 10 kilos that was the one when I spewed up you wouldn't like, like I've, I've, lad, no, I've cut overnight I've cut 8.4 kilo that was when I fought a rosa and I was sick in the cage and against Nada, done like 7.7 or 7.8 kilo. And then done five rounds the, night, the next night. And with that, when, when on the Nad one, I went to the uni and got a DEXA scan because they got a DEXA um, in the university in Liverpool. I went and got one of them. And they said, like, I had... At, at first, I thought he said I had the testosterone of a 12-year-old boy. But then when I spoke to Paul Reed the other week, he was like, no, we had no testosterone when you'd done that DEXA scan. But I'd done that in between making weight and, get, and going to the weighing. So... My body was at its lowest it possibly could have been. And what was the other one? I was 0.2 kilo away from kidney failure. <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. How's that feeling then, like, going through all that shit to, tr- to get to wait for a fight? Like? It's disgusting, lad. It's the worst. That's why 
Now I am a, a lightweight. That was a featherweight. That was at the weight below. Even now, people still think I could make featherweight, and but I don't want to do that to my body ever again. Lad, felt like I cut a few years off my life doing that. Yeah, yeah. How was it losing for the first time? And well, when I, world title, the, that one was horrible. The, the first time I lost, I was when I was I was eighteen. Lost when I was eighteen, lad. Um, as I always say, lad, someone puts me in a choke, I go to sleep, and I did. <laughs> I got put fast asleep in a choke, lad, in like a minute. And again, I half needed it at the time because at that time I'd won nine amateur, I'd won my first four pro, I was just beating everyone. I was on a thirteen fight win streak, and you just think no one can beat you, lad, and you're, you're unbeatable. Lost that one, done the same again, went nine and zero. But I was only 18 to 22, so I hadn't matured enough to realise the first lesson had been learned. I had to do it again after I went, nah, no, I had to lose again. Mm-hmm. And how is that when you reevaluate everything? Is that when you start making the changes yeah, like, and some adjustments? Because you seem to learn fast, like won the world title and then going off the rails, bringing it back in, having a defeat. That's where your growth is, that's where you learn the most. Yeah, it is. Like everyone says, you don't lose, you learn. Yeah. Every loss, you, you come out with a like I always say to the kids in the gym now, I wish I would have lost an amateur. I wish I would have lost when I was an amateur. Because it doesn't matter. <laughs> no one ever talks about your amateur record, lad. Did everything seem too easy? Yeah, an amateur lad. I was just school and everyone. I think one fight was a split decision. But like it shouldn't have even been. Yeah. I won six by decision and won three by sub. So I was just beating everyone. And then mm. my first four pro ones. I won the first three in the first round, the first half of the round. And then my fourth one, I fought a decent kid from London Shoe Fighters, um, Callum Florian, who was like a like a good wrestler. And he was about 30, or tw- late 20s at least, and I was like 18. And I beat him. And he'd sparred people out of our gym and done better than the people in our gym who were like 7 and 0 pro at the time. And I don't know what I can do. It just got to me head a bit because I was only a kid. I was only 18. Yeah. It's mad though because you think when you're 18 you think you're a man and when you're 21 you think you're a man and even for me when you're 23 you think you're a man and you realise it's only when you're 25, 26 that you do become a man. I'm 37 mate and I've still yet to find that. Fuck it, isn't it mate? So I'm, like, I'm still not got a fucking clue what's going on bro. Like, I genuinely know it. Like, everything I do I just fucking wing it. I've got my affirmations and I've got my visions where I want to take things in life and everything I do I achieve but I wake up some days and I think I ain't got a fucking clue what's going on today man like, I, I genuinely don't like, I think that's where people can relate to you so much because the zero fucks giving attitude what do you think it is with the scousers like he's a, like a tribe within a, like a different universe like you don't give a fuck about it like, so I've got so much love for uh, scousers but it's a uh, you don't give a fuck. Like, you look at all the fighters and stuff, there's something not right. Like, I think there must be something in the water yeah, down here. We're, man, all, we're, all, we're all tapped in the head. Like, <laughs> <therefore. clears throat> Even to get in there and fight, it's tapped in the head. Yeah. But most scousers are tapped in the head anyway. I always say we're our own breed, lads. We're our own type of people. Yeah. We are. Scousers just are. Like, there's no one in England what's like a scouser. The only one you can say is half like a scouser, but a proper woolly back version is a Geordie. Yeah. You know what I mean, but still, they're not like us. These are a different breed. I always say Irish more. and jocks are more like scousers yeah. than anyone in England. The Glaswegians, the Irish, uh, the Geordies, the scousers, kind of. I don't know what the fuck that is. Maybe they just put something in all our waters. Yeah. And this is all about fucking mad lads. Yeah, because the scousers are flying. You've always had a great names for fighting. Yeah, but you seem to be now the golden boy. You seem to be that. Do you feel as if there's more pressure put on you? Are you still enjoying it? Yeah, I just take asked. it in my stride, lad. Yeah. I'm not asked one bit. Mm-hmm. Because be the UFC came calling for you twice before, is that yeah, correct? Twice. One at 21? On a 20 Why did you not come back? Because um, Cage Warriors had just offered me a very big new deal. And the money they were offering to get paid in pounds, to not get taxed as, as much as you do straight away in America. You know what I mean? It was just a no-brainer, lad. Like... Mm-hmm. I helped, I helped pay stuff off what I needed paying, like my mum's mortgage, and I helped my sister get something. And obviously now I've got my own house. Like that all come from fighting for cage warriors, come off the wages off them. Yeah, so you owe a lot to them. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's fair play, man. Let's like, stick with them. They're all for good money. And it just goes to show how much the UFC actually offer people that. That's the biggest fucking... Well, I didn't, like, I, I'm, getting, I'm getting less now for the UFC than I did for me. Some of my cage warriors fights. That's mad to think I took that, a pay it? cut for this fight. <laughs> That's mad to think, but look how look at your your social media. It's now, it's yeah. That's what I mean. Loaded. That's all exploded. Yeah, I've got, yeah, yeah. I've got mad amounts of sponsors <clears throat> getting on me manager now. Like so, in that terms, it's I'm gonna earn more. Hundred percent goes without saying. Yeah, it's a business. To yeah, deal, have you got good people behind you to guide you that way as well? Yeah, I have. I've got as I say, Graham Boyd and laddies. Just looking after everything for me. Whenever anyone emails me now, I just thought oh, send me a message. I just say, just speak to Graham, speak mm-hmm. to Graham, and he sorts everything, lad. Yeah, he's the man. <laughs> after your fight for UFC, the the the, the girl was saying, like, would you want to call out anybody? And you're like, I'm not calling out anybody, but I want to call out um, fucking Instagram. The lizards, I want my account back. Yeah. Your account, ain't you? I had 130. Now you're hitting a million now, but it's Slab, unbelievable yeah. how things I- like that just. People just like, ah, this kid's a fucking crackpot. I had uh, <laughs> I had 157, 158,000, lad. And I was dying to get that. But I still want me stuff back off it. Instagram, <laughs> I still want me pictures and videos, you rats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I swear, lad, they're horrible, you know. Why did they delete it? Bullying and harassment. Because <clears throat> lad trolls give me shit. Mm. And I'm, I, you know, I can't help myself, lad. I give it back. And then, because obviously... My name's the one with in like the limelight a bit. People report my comments. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why are you just being backwards? You know what I mean? Like I'm the one giving it back. Don't block me. You know what I mean? All the stuff I do on there. I was never doing sharing charity links yeah. and going for me pages and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Speaking to people about our stuff. And then they're legging me. Because of bullying and harassment. Oh, lad, I swear to God. Have they ever but anyway, no, we haven't ever got back, but I've got a tick on my new account, so I think that's their way of saying, yeah, you're not getting that account uh-huh. back. There's the tick. Shut up. Yeah. But Bye. fuck you. <laughs> How was it then making the transition from Cage Warriors to UFC? Just the same? It's just the same for me, lad, yeah. It was like, everyone said that to me, but for me, lad, I've always been doing, like the media was a bit more... But I've always been doing loads of interviews. Like people have always been getting on me to do like little interviews over the phone, fight week and stuff like that, and little FaceTime interviews. So I, I've been doing that for ages. Like that's not new to me. Yeah. Like where they had to get you, where they had because I got there late as well. I had a proper schedule, lad, from like nine a.m. on the Tuesday, on the Wednesday morning to like three p.m., four p.m. I was just busy doing stuff all day. You know what I mean? Like, interview with this, podcast with him, um, pick me clothes up, sign the posters, go to the go to the Apex and get all your pictures and all your, your videos and your little interviews and stuff like that. That's mad, though, that. Like, all the stuff that you need to do. Is that before a fight as well? Yeah, that's fight week, lad, while you're cutting weight. Fuck's but sake, not cutting man. weight, but while you're, you're waterloading and stuff. Can that be a hindrance towards a fight where you think you can't be asked, but... Nah, with me, lad, it keeps you busy so you're not just nitpicking the food. That's Cake, what I do, lad. Yeah. Like, luckily enough, because I was late to Vegas, it was just me in my room. So there wasn't, like, no little bits of... Because I'm a grazer, lad. <coughs> Something's there, I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> As you saw before when you walked in with that bag <laughs> of food, lad. Like, just like that, yeah. Go ahead, lad, one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I just try everything. So it was better, lad, because I was in my own room. I weren't doing that as much. When I was going to other people's rooms, lad, Adam and Rimmer had these from Whole Foods, these like chocolate coated nuts. Like, they were heavy. I had a few of them, lads. I was like, oh, I need to stay away. Just yeah. stay away from their room. What was your training like for your first fight in the UFC? Was, it, was anything different or was it yeah, the same no, strategies? Just, yeah, mate. Just we look at the opponents and see what will work and what won't work against them. Know what I mean? And we work. We just, you work on yourself mainly. Know what I mean? But then you work on little things as well that could work against them. Is that more difficult though with like the limelight and the pressure because you just boomed like now you're you've you've already you were already here you were already a world class fighter but with the UFC it just kind of gives you an extra bubble yeah, it, like, it gives you an extra f- like elevates you more doesn't it? Cage Warriors has got about hundred and fifty thousand followers on Insta. The UFC's got like twenty eight point nine million lad. Yeah, that's the difference. Mm-hmm. Like on my original account when I got like I think I was I was on like eighty something thousand. 
when I got signed by the UFC, and then they put a picture up because they don't even normally announce signings. To be honest, like people just get signed, but they announce man, mm-hmm. and like me followers like when I was like one. 140 or something like that, 150, just because the UFC posted that. My followers just went went wild. Do you think that's why they can get away with shit wages? Because the, 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 everything know, else that comes at just, the outside just all of it. the way the sport's always been. Yeah. Sport's always been like that, lad. And a few fighters need to stand up and make it not be like that. But I'm not going to be one of them fighters that needs to do that because I'm going to be getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be to the top of the tree now, man. You were getting what offers, I do yeah. Because obviously, when you see, you think McGregor's going to stand up and do that and be like, "Oh yeah, everyone needs better wages." No, because you get heavy wages. Yeah. And I'll be getting heavy wages. Mm-hmm. So look after yourself. Because when you see Molly and that getting upset when she won fight and ain't getting extra paper on that, like, yeah. it's a class thing to see. But people, you just get in there and fucking risking it all, man. Yeah, you're hard, and like no one ever takes into account the show money and win money as well. Mm. If you lose your fight, you get half the money. You know what I mean? Do you? Yeah, because you get your show money. So like. The contacts are like 10 and 10, 15 and 15, 20 and 20. And like, if you you get your show money, so just to fight, you get your 10. And then if you win, you get the other 10. If you don't win, you're only getting the original 10, lad. And you've got to pay your manager, pay your coach. You, you, know, you don't come out with much, sad, let yeah. me tell you. It's just the, the buzz of fighting, though. Yeah, I, I just love fighting, me. I just yeah. enjoy fighting. Mm-hmm. Like my favourite thing to do in the gym is spa. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking crazy that button. I, I just uh, enjoy fighting, love. I so, always have. So after you when you won then, because like guys like Teddy Atlas and were speaking very high level, he's a legend. Yeah, absolutely fight legend. Game, man, when I like, seen that from yeah. him, I was just like, wow, it's unbelievable. Uh-huh. That uh, was that was sick. That was sick. How was that podcast? <laughs> that was sad. It was just that like that's as I say, on the mon- Monday I got back from Cornwall, I had to go straight to to London uh-huh. to do match of the day on the Tuesday so as soon as I got the hotel I had to sit down and put my phone on and do that one <laughs> nine o'clock at uh-huh. that time how's your burden that dealing with the the, 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 the super stardom now man it's, yeah it's, it is it's like, and I said, like I said to you the other day you need to get used to it because this is just the start like it's going to be ten times worse than this in the next few years we're probably going to have four bouncers stood around us Yeah. so like get used to it why do you think I was on the DM straight away, bro? Uh, <laughs> Before I had to go through about six, seven different fucking managers. <laughs> well, I mean, just boom, mate. And I was like, ah, he's fucking class. That, can you hear me now? You're shouting. I'm thinking, I, I don't know. Lad, that just uh, come just, on, you know. Yeah. They just put that on in the uh, thing, yo. Like that song, come on. And I just, lad, when you win a fight, there's no feeling like it. Mm. Like the only thing I can like compare to it and I've never had a child, so I don't know, is watching your baby give birth and holding the kid. Because everyone says that's the, the best feeling in the world. Like, that's the only thing I can compare fight, winning a fight to. Mm-hmm. What was your um, game plan going into your first fight? It's coming to knock his head off. It's first round, because you predicted yeah. that? So I said the whole time, I'm coming to beat him in the first round with, with my hands. And you never felt that punch from him? No. It it's funny, I turned to Adam well. after it, I turned to Adam after him and... Dad, why are you all going on about this punch? I never went down, did I? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was like, no. I was like, what the fuck are you all going on about then? Yeah. But lad, when I've watched it back, it's the noise out of it. Because the noise of the punch just makes it sound even worse. Mm-hmm. But that's another thing I've just made him. Well, lad, he hit me with one of his best shots and I just stood there. Like, I know why I've done that as well. Like, I throw a certain type of punch and I roll in between and in that one I didn't roll. So I know why I got... If I would have rolled and threw the punch I was going to throw, I would have fucking knocked him out. But yeah. I never, I never rolled and got caught with that left hook because of it. How was it fighting without any fans? Well, it was... I fought twice without fans. I'd be, well, to be honest, I'm I'm 3-0 and in my last three fights without fans with first round finishes. <laughs> but, at the la- <laughs> but at the last one, there was like there was like 100 fans at, uh-huh. that, at the apex. But me two before that, my last two cage ones, I haven't had anyone there. I'm surprised with four Scousers that night. Uh, on the card. Yeah, if you'd include Aspinall as a Scouser. Like. Yeah. Is, um, why was it not? It was meant to be you, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was meant to be you. What was that? Yeah, it was meant to be you, but it got, you just couldn't get it all sorted in time, I don't think. So I ended up getting moved to Vegas. That's a pain in the ass though, isn't it? Try to get dates and there's so much good yeah, tape is. around it's, that It was shit. all hard work, lad. It was even harder for me, lad. It was just all stress. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that I got moved there because then that was less time to get your visa sorted 
and it was just all a proper big yeah. edit. That's why I got there like that. It was stress. Because people love you for your honesty and you're no holds barred and you just say it how it is because guys like Jake Paul and stuff, you call him a sausage and then he's uh, replying like... He's just a tool, lad. <laughs> I don't even like talking about them idiots, lad, you know. Do you know what I mean, lad? What about, what's the story with Conor McGregor? Was he at your house one day? That's, lad, that was what the story was meant to be like, but like at the time, at the time I was out all the time myself. I'd just lost a few weeks before, actually. And I was still just in a mad place, just wanting to go out and get absolutely slosh. I wouldn't think about it. And um, he was meant to, he was meant to be outside ours, lad. But I got me mask to check the cameras because obviously if McGregor's at your door, your video and that, aren't you? And banging it all over the internet and getting pure views. Mm -hmm. And um, he wasn't. He must have been at someone else's. He was with someone who was in the city at the time. And I remember that lad bumping into me in Glasgow going like we had the big fella at your door we had the big... I was like lad you never <laughs> he's like no we did we did I was like lad you never I promise you because my man's got cameras <laughs> oh no we did we did I was like well lad you were at the wrong door you know what I mean I'm gutted I wish I was in I wish I was there and like they were that man I was like what is happening what's going on <laughs> what was it at your door I don't know it was either a straightener like the lad who I've seen in Glasgow tried to tell me it was for a straightener but then other people who've who know my mates have said he spoke to people who were in the party and he wanted me to go partying with them. So I don't know, lad. Have you not spoke to him? No, I've not. Like the first ever contact we had was that tweet when he tweeted me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's Apart from that, the only other time I've spoke to him was in Cage Warriors before he ever had his first UFC fight. Yeah. He's an absolute legend in the game. He kind of took UFC another level. Yeah, he has. He, ch he changed the game, lad. Yeah. Like, he doesn't get enough respect for it because he changed the game. Jealousy, though. Yeah, lad. it is, lad. People go on about him now, but he literally changed the face of the sport. Yeah. So you've got to give him the respect for that. Yeah, so he's opening doors for guys like yourself to come through and you've seen the marketing yeah, tools and exactly. strategies that he done. Like he was a double champ, man. Like he he done that first out of anybody like to do that and that and the UFC is fucking one won one belt's fucking hard. Never mind to one two. Yeah. And it obviously is. then the global stardom and the fight in the Mayweather for a hundred million. Anybody would fucking do that. And it's the hatred and the jealousy there. Yeah, there is. But I think he thrives on that. Like I say, man, he's a legend in that sport and everything he's achieved is fucking second to none. Like, that's why the hatred and people who's been doing it for twenty years and can't get nowhere near his level. That's why one of the the um Wow, lad, I've just completely forgot what I was going to say there. Mm -hmm. Literally. Because he was making that much money, the jealousy with him. Could you fight him? Could you fight Yeah, he's my weight. He's my weight. Yeah, I know. He he's 155. That's a mega money fight. I've been asked before who's the one the one fight who you'd, um, you'd want to fight. And you're always saying him because of the money involved. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a pay-per-view. You're going to get part of the pay-per-view. You're going to want to fight McGregor. But as I've said... That's me the next few years, lad. Yeah. Everyone's going to want to fight me because I'm the one getting them pay-per-view numbers in. Mm -hmm. no, like That's what's going to happen. You never know. We could eventually end up fighting to be the biggest pay-per-view of all time. That'd be class, man. Would, lad. And we could do that at Anfield, lad. That'd be class. But he's always wanted Croke Park, hasn't he? So. Yeah. That could be his sign out. His last fight. He's still got another few years in him, do you know what I mean? Yeah, if he has. Everyone's yeah. saying he's finished, lad. He's not. Now, if anybody can bounce back, I believe he can. He's got yeah. that mental strategy. That to, but again, how could, when you're making so much fucking money, that's, how can you That's it, lad. When you've got that much fire? dough, how can you have the same, like as you say, fire that's under your ass as mm -hmm. you did when you didn't have that money? Yeah. It's not the same. It's just not. Your division seems to be the strongest, man. Yeah, lot, I think it's the... heavy hitters that... It's the shark tank of the UFC, 155. That's why I did think about going back down to 45 because it's a lot, much of a quicker route to the belt. Try McGregor done it as well, you know what I mean? 45, mm -hmm. it's a lot, it's an easier route to the belt, but I just can't be ass killing myself hard to make it. So yeah. I'll just fight killers at 155. What do you think? Like, Khabib says he's retired, but do you think you could be the kind of guy that he would come back and fight? I don't know, lad. If I got under his skin enough, you never know. Um, but nah, he's not fighting again till something like I hate saying stuff like this but his mum passes away because he promised his mum didn't he promised his mum that he won't fight so he's not fighting again until she allows him to fight or that happens you know what I mean I just don't think he's fighting because he's made a promise to his mum lad so yeah he seemed loyal that way yeah, yeah. would uh, anyone ever get you to stop fighting Um, probably not <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> probably not my bird always says I'd rather you be a bricklayer 
Mm. I hate this. I hate this. Four people asking for pictures, and I'd rather you be a bit of clay, but lad, this, I know this is what I was put on this earth to do, lad. How is fight, it? but yeah. not just fight, entertain people. How is it for family members and friends to watch you, though, fighting in a cage? Did they get used to it, or does it still get um, scared, nervous for my you? My mum doesn't watch any fights. My mum comes to one fight and I lost. She'll never come again. She come when I got beaten that. Um, do you blame her for that? No. <laughs> You could if I wanted to. <laughs> if I wanted to be an asshole about it, I could. But my dad and my uncle both come to every yeah. fight that they can come to. But then when the, when I actually fight, they go and stand at the bar going, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Just acting all mad because they don't want to watch. Um, and my sister half does that. My sister half, like, yeah. kind of like that. But it's annoying when my bear gets pissed. Like, when my bear gets pissed, I can just say, uh, come on, Paddy. I'm just like, oh, don't shut up. Mm-hmm. Making a show of us, girl. Turn it in. <laughs> so I tell her now, don't get drunk before a fight. Uh-huh. Does it? Because it must be tough. Like that's a fucking ruthless sport. Like you, you can die, man. Let's like, life. Yeah, you can, man. Like, do you feel that added pressure when more family and friends are there? Um, do you feel the most pressure in like the echo, like you know what I mean? Because it's all, it's all your own fans. Like that's why I always say. I've always said. My UFC debut, or no matter where it is, I won't be that nervous because unless it's in Liverpool in front of my own fans again, and I've lost there, lad. So there's no worse feeling in the world than losing in that echo arena when it's full. Mm-hmm. And I've done that twice. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, <sighs> fighting in front of friends and family is just something I've always done. My mate always comes to me fights, like my missus does, me, my dad, and that do. My dad's been coming to grappling comp since 2010. So it's just part and parcel of it, really. I can't, I don't really get nervous fighting anymore. Obviously, when you're standing in the cage at the last second, you think to yourself, oh, I'm mad on this, and I'm about to start having it with this fella. But that's just what you do. You just, mm. like When I get in there, I try and blank everything else out. The only voices I want to hear are my corners' voices. Your man, Dan, must be so proud, though, that for what you've achieved to being only 26 and everything you've already achieved like they must be fucking buzzing mate they must be walking around this city with a t-shirt on and your face <laughs> like, they must be because I'm fucking proud of you mate. I've only just met you today like, because of everything you've achieved man it's such a good feeling and that goes for any kid that's watching or anybody watching that things can be achieved if you truly believe it like you genuinely believe that everything you're going to yeah. do is going to come into existence that's though. how I say to all kids now I was like lad if you want to do something, just do it. Believe in yourself. And that's all that matters. Believe in yourself that you can do it. That's all I've done. And I wasn't the hardest in my school. I wasn't the hardest in my year. You know what I mean? I was just a little kid. Mm-hmm. I just started doing something and put me heart, mind and soul into it, lad. And I'm where I am now. Mm-hmm. So that's what I always try and get across to the younger kids because a lot of them get like, stuck on the wrong path. I could have easily done that. Mm-hmm. So it's not hard to do in this city but you've just got to find something that you're good at not even what you're good at find something you enjoy because you get good at something if you enjoy it you want to do it so you carry on doing it and you get good at it yeah has anybody called you out yet? oh lads all sorts Who? I'm not even going to say any of their names are they bums. All... <laughs> are they all calling you out now? Um, yeah lad um, loads of them there's some yank um, there's one of your fellow jocks um, who is there there's a few lad there's a few on Insta there's one on Insta one on Twitter and there's some somewhere else I'm oh, calling mean. you out yeah, is, but it, I, is it Sean O'Malley as well but you're fucking two divisions not, above lad. him I mentioned something about him in an interview in March no was it March sorry April or April or May anyway I said something about him in an interview in April or May and now all media outlets are going back to this thing you know in, in like from months ago and putting it out as if I've said it now when Mix, I haven't said it months it. ago yeah and they're mixing up little things what I've said in it you know what I mean and putting them together like I said something in it, like oh, he's a little pothead, pothead and then like but said something else and he's mixed like something, he's a bitch ass pothead he said I said <laughs> when I called him a pothead in a different line laughing about it and I said oh yeah he's a bitch ass over his ankle he put two different lines together lad he's a bitch ass uh-huh. pothead uh-huh. I was like lad I never said that why are you misquoting me mm-hmm. and they put the article in and, and I was like yeah exactly read it they're in two different paragraphs uh-huh. <laughs> oh lad they're horrible I actually seen him speaking about you but he actually spoke quite highly of you yeah no what so I, I what I said I said something about him like something about he's a striker 
but he, I thought he doesn't really like grappling. But I've seen a few videos of him lately grappling, lad. So it's a bit like me. A lot of people said I was just a grappler and I couldn't strike. I've probably done the same narrative with him mm-hmm. and thought, oh, yeah, he, he's just a striker. He can't grapple. Where he obviously can grapple. But yeah. if he wants to fight me, lad, I'll fight him, especially because of how much smaller he is. But <laughs> as I say, we're on different paths, lad. He's a yeah. 135er. I'm a 155er. Mm-hmm. There's 20 pounds in between us. To be honest, the UFC will not want to put us together because they'll want to keep us going on a up as trajectory on our yeah. own. You know what I mean? Start a business for yeah, them. Yeah, that's not, it. Business for them, lad. They don't. They're not stupid. Yeah, they're gonna want to keep us apart. They'll probably end up fucking having us as a guest on a fucking show together or something. Mm-hmm. They're very good with the business. Yeah, they'll have us making mates, lad, in the next few months, <laughs> lad. Is, where do you go? Who's the next fight then for you? Who's on your sights? Anyone, lad. I don't care. Literally, I'm not asked. Mm-hmm. Whoever whoever's name is on the contract, I'm gonna sign it. it. Doesn't really matter to me. Who's your ultimate goal? Who would you have loved to fight? Anyway, any division. I don't even care. Nah, I don't even look. It's, I can't. When people say that, any weight in that, I'm like, I can't really think about that. Yeah, I mean, I know yeah. what I mean. Anyway, because I always look at people from like the weight divisions. But like people always say, who's the who's like your hero or like the person that you like in MMA and my one's Big Nog, Big Nogueira. Mm-hmm. He was like, he could take a proper beating. And nine times out of ten, he caught you in a submission <laughs> or beat you on the feet. You know what I mean? He'd always, always, even then he was as I said, smashed in, lad, for 15 minutes. He'd always have a chance of catching in the sun. And that's what I pride myself on, but I'm like, mm-hmm. like, I know for a fact, you can keep beating me up, you can keep beating me up, but I won't tap, I won't quit. You'll have to snap something or put me asleep. Yeah. See, when you said you were on the booze and stuff and you were kind of slipping, would you when you reined it back in, did you do a lot of sacrifices from friends and Yeah, family, a lot of I had to, I just got back to my roots, lad, and got back to my original my good mates, lad, who've been there since day one. You know what I mean? Mm. Got back to them. Where I'd obviously I'd had a few clings on around the time. Cling ons around the time and I just end up legging all them and stopping speaking to them, getting away from them. And obviously some some people who had started speaking to in that time I still speak to, but a lot of them I don't. And yeah. I just stick to me, me, me little tight knit firm of all the lads from by ours, people I've, I've went to primary school with and senior school with and stuff like that, you know what I mean? See, when you start becoming more successful than other people, though, it's the, the jealousy and the hate that comes with you felt any of that shit yet? Um, some stupid comments and stuff like that. But lad, I've had that, as I say, I've had that for years. <laughs> Have you? I've had that for years, lad, How in do this you deal city. With that? I don't know, some people are just jealous little rodents, lad. Like, you just get on with it. Like, yeah. I've had a gang of, well, I say a gang of divvies, but mainly one divvy, a stupid conspiracy theorist, make a conspiracy theory video about me. You know what I mean? And try and tarnish my name because he knew how big I was going to become when he hates me. Mm-hmm. And it didn't work. And I'm where I am now. And he's still stuck in his little shit hole. So I just laugh about it. That's all you can do, man. Like every time you level up, there comes new waves of hate. There comes yeah, there new is. fucking like there's that's fuck all to what's gonna come. Cause that's you. Yeah, there is that this is just the start. Yeah. Like I know by the end of the year I'll have a million followers. I think you'll have that by the end of the month, next month. I fucking hope so, so lad. It's even more, more money. <laughs> money. You know get that I mean? money in, lad. Uh-huh. I need to pay me mortgage off yeah. sharpers and get moving. Uh-huh. You have the key to Liverpool by the end of fucking next year. Anyway, fucking hope so, lad. <laughs> the only fools bar, mate. They'll give you the key, mate. The boys love <laughs> me, bro. Is, um... I know what you were saying before. I need up on that wall real soon, lad. Oh, mate. I can't believe you've not got your accounts. Mate, I should be up on the fucking wall as well, mate. Lad, Dunny, man. That picture of Dunny's uh, <laughs> next to the cathedral. Is, um, but your career is, like I said, this is only the beginning, I feel, for you, like, from everything you have. But the people not seeing the groundwork, what you've done over the last 10, 12 years to get to where you are. People only see... The, yeah, people only see this now. Yeah. Even Carl, he's just jumped on the scene. He's only just... Uh-huh. Lad, I've been doing this for nearly 12 years, lad. I haven't just jumped on, believe me. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing this for 12 years in January, lad. So I've been putting the work in for years and years. Yeah. That's what's one good thing about the last few years, though. In like December 2018, it was just after I'd lost to back and I was just getting back in the gym. Uh, someone started doing, coming around, following me, filming. And... I had it. So December 2018, he's still doing that now, coming around filming me. And lad, when that ends up coming out, 
that's going to be an unbelievable little documentary that. Yeah. Because like, that is from like the lowest of the low where I was when mm-hmm. Mac beat me to the highest of highs, lad, winning my UFC debut. That's what the gold does, though. Those videos were worth fortunes yeah. in fucking five, ten years time. Fuck, lad, that'll be like a ten-parter on the fucking I mean? Netflix, like uh, The Last Dance. Uh-huh. Because so that'll love, be. People love going back and looking at the old stuff. Lad, he's gone over 30 hours yeah. of footage now, lad. That's a mm. ten-parter on the Netflix. <laughs> Money! You know what I mean? Get it going. It's fucking unbelievable, but like, it's, a, it's a great feeling to see people succeed. Uh, people, when they're doing well, like to see other people do well, like, it's the hatred. You seem to thrive on that, though. You seem yeah. to thrive on the little digs. That, that's what I was meant to say before. You've just brought it uh-huh. back, Belter. That, like, I'm like, though, you said McGregor, he thrives on... I do. I mm-hmm. thrive on that. I always say one of the things I enjoy doing is proving me the people who believed in me right, but just as much I like proving the doubt is wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like saying, I told you so. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's something I like doing. I like saying to... People that were saying, oh, you'll never do this, you'll never do that. What, what now? I told you so, didn't I? I told you I was going to. And what did I do? Yeah, that's the best feeling. Like I can get thousands of comments and they'll all be positive and I'll get one arsehole who... And that's what sticks out. My, my tan or my teeth, man. I'll think, that's what sticks man. out, then. And then I'll lie in my bed all night thinking, oh, fucking, that bastard. Like, that's what... Yeah. Me, me manager's always said it to me, I'm, and Ian Dean, he've always said, you need to become a black belt on social media. And I think I'm starting to do that over the past couple of months. Because at the start of this year, lad, if you would have said the start of this year, three months ago, if you would have said three, four months ago, if you would have said something to me on Insta, right, and I'd comment back and I couldn't help it. I thought if if I'm letting them say that to me, they're winning. But when I look at it now, if I say something back, they are they're winning. winning yeah. Because I'm taking time out of my day to say something to them mm-hmm. and they're going to their mates, oh, look, bloody said something back. So now that I just, Blank all the negative ones. Yeah, you know what I mean? Into their energy. After when you put your phone down, after five minutes, like, you forgot about it because you're doing something else. Yeah, yeah, you're, f- you're just feeding into their energy. Yeah, you Do don't need I mean? that negativity. Yeah. For any kid watching this, maybe going through a bit of like, trolling or bullying or kind of online abuse, what advice would you have for them? <sighs> don't respond. Yeah, that's the best thing to do. Don't respond. Because the more you respond, the more they're feeding off that energy. Mm-hmm. Just, just blank it out. Just I always used to say, oh, they've one of it, blocked them. But just block them. Yeah. Yeah. But I think you've had the the probably the biggest debut in UFC fucking history, the way you've come in, like the way you've you've totally relished that and you've totally utilized it to your and advantage. It's funny man. that because I can remember about four weeks before the fourth or something, I was watching top ten UFC debuts mm-hmm. on the YouTube and I videoed it on my Insta story and was like, Top ten UFC debuts, I'm gonna be on this list in the next few weeks. Watch. I knew it was coming, lad. I just knew. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I've always said it. One fight, one interview, and I'll be everywhere. And it's happened. Those fucking memes, mate. Every time I go on social media, it's just your face, mate. It's, sick, it's it? fucking nuts. And the best one, the best <laughs> one is the do the roar. Mm-hmm. Do the roar. Uh-huh. Everyone's saying I look like the kid off Shrek. Lad, <laughs> that's the best one, lad. <laughs> Someone's put like two photos together and it's... <laughs> Paddy in pa- Paddy after his fight, and it's a picture of me because um, when I'm in the back, because where you hear all Vaseline on your face, I've just done that to get my hair out my heart, yeah. out my face. And people were saying I look like Prince Charming, so yeah. it was like Prince Charming. I said, it was like Paddy <laughs> af- just after his fight, Paddy a week after his fight, yeah. and then because my cheeks are like that, it was like the, the dude the rock. Yeah. That's fucking Straight mad. Lad. But those videos are the ones that boost your... Yeah, they're, it is. They're making you money. I'd pure people, call, like yeah. I've been called the one-off bench warmers who eats his own sun cream. Won't go outside. I've been called Napoleon Dynamite, which is a bad one. Owen Hart, Owen Wilson. Um, the fifth Beatles was a cracker. Yeah, the fifth Beatles are a good one, though. I think, well, Owen Hart's a good one, to be honest. I think, well, obviously, Jay off the in between us. I've heard that one for about nine years. Um... Well, there was a few others where people, he man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? A few, all ones like that, yeah. lot of people were putting in. And then people, I, I, I shared one of them myself, didn't I? And then people were commenting, oh, you missed this, you missed that, you missed that. You know what I mean? But I must look like major people, me. People are bastards as well, though. It's because you've got that nature where you laugh it off as well. People think it's... But again, it's just the, all that shit, people mentioning your name everything that you're doing is just pure business yeah. it's just pure promotion to keep building your profile you'll be sitting here and your, everything will be going rising because people are going who the fuck is this you've made glo- global headlines because of 
the way you are, the way you talk, the way you just. I'm like, that's just me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I hate people who put personas and that on lad. Yeah. Like, I hate Colby Covington lad. Why? Don't know if you know him or not. Yeah, yeah. Lad, I hate him lad. Why? I hope he gets hit by a bus. <laughs> and he's just proper annoying. Like. I've been told he's got a ghostwriter and all that, lad. Doesn't even come up with all the own, his own stuff he comes out with. Like, it's all an act, isn't it? It's all an act. Everything he does behind the cameras, it's, he's not like that. When there's not cameras there, he's not like that. And that just infuriates me, lad. Because he's just fake. As if you, if you met a lot of people in the industry? Um, there is, there's a few, yeah. But he's meant to be the worst one out of them all. But yeah, there's a few people like that who are like, the act difference in front of cameras and that just rubs me off the wrong way lad people yeah. who do that are bad bad helmets yeah well it's two faced then isn't it yeah like you have to just be yourself and that's yeah. why that's why I am that's why people like me because I'm just authentic lad what you see is what you get mm-hmm. I can't help myself let's talk about your tune your song your walk-in song <laughs> it's fucking banging I heard, I heard you mix that yourself uh, yeah one of, well I asked the DJ to put them two songs together uh-huh. Chan done it for me because the Lethal Industry, the first song, it doesn't, it doesn't really drop good. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It like just like goes into the same beat. But where's your head at? As a heavy drop. So I was just like, yeah, that tune into that one, and lad, it's just the heaviest beat ever. Yeah. So seeing you getting there and you're singing and dancing, like if somebody didn't know you and they think, man, he's just he's just a, a friendly big guy. How do you change that fucking mentality to go from being a singing and dancing to then killer mentality? With me. It's just, as soon as that, like, as soon as my tune goes off, lad, and I can hear the announcer, I have to just zone in on my opponent. Nine times out of ten, I'll just stand there looking at my opponent. I won't take my eyes off him. I won't turn around, talk to me corner, have a drink, nothing like that. I'll just stand there staring at him for the for the whole time. I won't take my eyes off my opponent. That's what gets me in the zone, like, like, and as I say, as soon as you take a punch or anything like that, or he takes it, or you throw up a punch and land a good punch, I go into like, not autopilot, but I just zone in on him. Like, I get vicious. <laughs> but I'm not like that. But I do. I think like, I'm going to hate you now. That's what goes through my head. I'm going to fucking snap your chin now. Yeah, I'm starting to get scared, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I was starting to get worried there. I was like, is that me? If I've done, I'm sorry. <laughs> is, uh, so, uh, with your re in Cornwall as well, Cornwall as well was, that, was that good? Was that, or were you just kind of on your phone all the time, kind of? Because everything was popping oh, then. I'm always on my phone anyway. I'm bad, Laura. always moans at me for that. Like, get off your phone, get off your phone. But um, it was just more active there. Because we went in May. And I got like four or five photos and we went this time and I got like 60, 70, 80 photos, lad. We were there for a bit longer this time, but like we went into a pub one night to saw a fish in. And last time we were going there every every day because it was local to where we was. And this time we only went in there twice. But the Friday, we went in there the first time, got a few pictures and signed something. And then on the Friday night, lad, because obviously everyone was in there, and I must have got about 30 photos. It was it was just mad. I was just sat there. Like, didn't expect this in Cornwall, like maybe yeah. in, in in Liverpool, because that's been happening in Liverpool for years, lad. We've been get, always been getting pictures in Liverpool and stuff like that, especially with younger people and with kids and that. But now that it's it's a complete different demographic. Do you think you ever get tired of that? Um, I think everyone ends up getting tired yeah. of it. But I, if I went up to someone who I was looked up to when I was a kid and said, can I have a picture? And he said, no, I'd be so disappointed. And mm-hmm. So I'll never say no to anyone. Yeah, the only right. time it gets annoying is when you're sitting there eating food. Yeah, I someone done that in Cornwall, lad. I was stood on the pier eating a bubble waffle <laughs> with two bits of ice cream mm-hmm. in and pure <laughs> chocolate, lad. Chocolate dripping down my hands, dripping down my chin. And this woman who's about 60 comes over and goes, can I get a picture? Come on, love, are you for real? Like, uh-huh. there's chocolate all down my chin. <laughs> I swear, lad. My beard is looking around like that. Mm-hmm. Proper snarling. They're the only, like, for me, that's the only time it gets annoying when I'm busy doing something or I'm eating food, lad. I think it's only going to get worse for you, bro. Yeah, like, it is. It's only going to get worse. You know what I mean? Like, I can't see myself in the future doing a McGregor where he just takes someone's phone and bounces it off the floor. Because <laughs> yeah. that's just, it's just uh-huh. video when you're on the sly or like just round your face is annoying, lad. Like, yeah. that's like next level. Don't be doing that. 
Because you're still fighters at the end of the day. You're still not going to take any shit. Like. And at the end of the day, we're still normal people. Yeah. Like. You don't want someone like, I think my bit had said they were doing it in the Nando's last night. We were getting a picture of two kids on the way out. And one of the staff in the Nando's was taking a picture of me while I weren't looking. And my bird snarled the life out of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's annoying when people are videoing and taking pictures of you when you're not looking. Yeah, it's a sneaky shit. Yeah. It's when you're in, in it, maybe in the fucking nest up doing a shit and somebody pops their head over the, over the oh, cubicle. Oh, lad. It's like that Eminem song, you know, lad, <laughs> yeah, he yeah, says, yeah. can't go yeah. in the bog without you smelling uh-huh. me shit. <laughs> Massive Liverpool fan, bro. Yeah. yeah in your blood, your, your the blood, mighty red yeah, lad. so how's that experience going to Anfield and shit now? Like, was everybody fucking all over you? Well, lad, yeah. The other day when I went to Anfield, <laughs> uh, luckily enough, the last two times I went to Anfield, I've got half a season ticket this year in the Centenary. Well, the, the Kenny Dagley stand, it's called mm-hmm. now, isn't it? But I've got half season ticket there, but the last two games, lad, um, one of my mates got me in his, like in the lounge with him, and then one of my sponsors got me in the other day. So I've been going to the ground hour and a half before kick-off, been getting there like uh, an hour and a half, and lad, I've still been getting pitches <laughs> there an hour and a half before. I don't know what it's because, lad, when I go, I get in like 10 minutes before kick-off, if that, five minutes before yeah. kick-off, and you'll never walk alone, it's going off. And... I can't think of what it's going to be like when I go at, at that time again. But at, it's going to be the City game, innit? So, like, the next, when I go to the City game, lad, it's going to be hard work. Do you see yourself walking out there on the world title for the yeah, UFC? Yeah, do, lad. Uh. But I've, I, lad, I'll be honest, I reckon I'd rather bring the UFC to Anfield and fight in Anfield than win a world title. Yeah, it's never, been, never been a fight in no. Anfield, has it? I think Callum Smith tried to get it. Yeah, they tried to get ago. it on, but it's just never happened. Why is that? I don't know. Obviously, with the season, lad, it'd have to be in May. I mean, it'd have to be the, the proper back end of May or June or early July. Mm. Like, they wouldn't do it any other time of year because of the, the fuzzy. Yeah. You've had a few Scotsmen play for Liverpool. Ken Kenny, Soonis, Robertson. Who's your best? I have to say Dag Leash, aren't we, lad? Yeah, he's a legend, isn't he? Yeah, Dag yeah. Leash is the man, lad. Uh-huh. But then obviously my dad goes on about Sunas. Um, but Robbo's the man for me, lad. Robbo's one of my favourites in the team, lad. He's everywhere. You forgot the main man there as well, though, when we talk about the idea, Shanks. Fuck's sake, what a yeah, fucking man, guy, lad. Legend, man. What a guy. Yeah. So you're buzzing for it then in the future, everything all planned. Like, yeah, lad, Liverpool uh, needs to get on me and say, yeah, there's a few free tickets there, but there's fucking door injuries, lad. Have they not given you fucking No, lad, never, ever. <laughs> Molly's been given all sorts of heaven, <laughs> you know what I mean? No wonder really... that gets called the People's Club. <laughs> Your relationship with Molly seems tight as fuck. Like, shout out to Molly, man, I love it. Yeah, Mo- she's Molly's solid. boss, lad. Molly's yeah. my big sister, lad, she's, she's great. She's shouting, she's wanting a baby and shit, like, that kind of put the scousers as just crazy alcoholics, man, after that. <laughs> Night, Every time she goes out now, lad, everyone's just like, Do you want a bevy? Do you want a bevy? Yeah. People just don't stop buying the bevies now, lad. Mm. <laughs> How is that relationship? Was you trained for years? Yeah, we've year? trained together since like 2011 or so. You know what I mean? Mm. She's went and lived in Bournemouth and stuff like that, but she's always come back. Um, since she's come back the last time, we've we've just got better and better and up there and up there. And lad, in the next two years, lad, our gym's gonna have about six or seven people in the UFC. 100 percent I just like I'm going to go we're going to Cage Warriors next week. One of the lads, Nathan's are gonna win a world title, lad. It's gonna be great. Be another world title getting brought back to the gym and there's six lads fighting and I'm expecting six wins. Just like the other night, lad. Four lads fought, we have four wins. How does that make you feel now that people are looking up to you for inspiration? Um I, it's a bit mad from the from the start because I was the I was the, the smallest kid in there who was just part of the fight team half looking up to everyone else and now I'm half like the captain and it's, it is mad I've put, as I say that's the good thing about growing up I've had to grow up I've had to grow up a lot over the past two years never mind the past eight years yeah. you know what I mean where do you get that drive from where do you get that belief of is it somebody in your family do you get any other fighters in your family where does it um, come from nah not not my uncle was meant to be a very, very hard fella, like, but he never, he's never, a, he was a street fighter. Him and his mate, he and beat multiple people up at once, but ah, uh, Brian wasn't like, never had boxed or nothing. Um, and me, people say my granddad's a tough fella, but obviously he's like 85 now, that's why I've never, never yeah. loved a my granddad like that. Yeah. And um, my uncle was a footy player, lad. My uncle Frank uh, was very good as well. My dad's older brother. 
So for years, my dad always said to me, don't throw it all away like him, don't throw it all away like him. Because that's what he done. He loved the bevy, he loved birds. Just, he played to the Aston Villa first team when he was like 16, 17. And then just started acting the goat and he ended up finishing his career in Australia, lad. Become a legend for a shite team over there because obviously the team just shite. <laughs> yeah. Where really he could have been a legend over here. Do you think that's where it plays in your mind? Yeah, when it you does. I always say. Day, do you think that's yeah. somebody's ingrained that in your mind? Wait, wasted talent is one of the worst things ever. Yeah. Especially when someone's got the talent to do something and they just throw it all away. That's like one of the biggest wastes ever. So I just, I'm never going to be that fella sitting in the boozer going, oh, I could have been this, could have been that, fuck that, fuck being that fella. Yeah, did you ever, was there ever a time you ever felt like quitting? So I know a lot of fighters, you have your ups and downs, like you probably have more downs than ups, but is there any time you ever felt, this is not for me fighting? Um, I never ever thought this is not for me. The only other time I thought that was when like the wages were bad and I didn't think I was, I could earn enough money. Just watching me mate turn money other ways, thinking I could be doing that. Why am I in the gym all day, every day? Did people seem used to tell people your vision? Because you're not shy about holding things back. Oh, you, no, you I've told. Yeah, did people used to yeah. laugh and scream? Yeah. Eyes? People always used to laugh at that. I always used yeah. to say, I'm glad you're laughing because if you're not laughing at my dreams, they're not big enough. It's that simple. Yeah, because you got to, that's why I, Conor McGregor again, we'll go back to him. Like, he was on benefits, man. Fucking driving about in a car that can, it's basically not running on f no fuel. Like, the lad, lad I've never cleaned benefits and yeah. I've always rolled a bike. Yeah. So I'm even worse than him. <laughs> yeah. What have you got a driving license? No. What would the first car you would buy? Dunno. I'd have one what was good on the petty lad, save yeah. me dough. <laughs> <laughs> Going forward for the future, brother. What's your plans? Take over. Like literally, my face is gonna be everywhere, lad. So I need to lose some weight again because at the minute these cheeks are just too big. <laughs> and I'm sitting here smiling at you now. I can just feel my cheeks out like that. I'm like a proper hamster. Yeah. But um, yeah, lad, my face is going to be everywhere real soon. I'm going to have another fight. Hopefully another one before the end of the year. Knock, knock someone else out or submit someone else. And then I know for a fact I'll be on over a million followers by the end of the year then. Another fight, another interview, a few more interviews, stuff like that. Um, they'll probably want to offer me a new contract right away to be honest and that's when all the other doors open up lad more money more sponsors life's going to be good lad yeah. life's going to be good it's already good brother yeah. like, do you sign as like a free match deal what is yeah that? you sign a work? four fight deal lad so obviously mm. I've only had one they've got you at a fucking bargain then we are yeah. bastards <laughs> they have lad so they're going to add, I reckon they'll probably get me to have two more fights obviously he won't want it to run out. So I'll have two more fights probably and then they'll offer me a new contract. Obviously, the UFC is the biggest, but could somebody pitch you that like, come in after you and offer you Yeah, someone could. From the UFC? But I wouldn't, I wouldn't even do that. Yeah. Like Bellator's shit, lad. Yeah. Bellator's a load of shit. Um, UFC is where you want to be. The only other place I'd fight would probably be one. They offer big money, like, but like they got Mighty Mouse off the UFC. That's where he fights now. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I. I like to fight them rules. I like them rules where you can throw knees, knees on the ground. Um, but the UFC is the place to be, lad. Especially in the one fifty five pound division. Yeah, it's a tasty division. UFC is the place to be. So after three, do you think you'll get fast tracked to a world title? No, no, think so. Do you think I think they'll do the opposite. Hold you back. Just... I think they know what they done with Till. Yeah, in fact, they rushed Till along, didn't they? And it, it's hindered them. Where look what they're doing with O'Malley. Slowly but surely he's fighting different people, different mm. people. And now I think he's fighting seen it yesterday, he's fighting up Brian Kell Heller or son. He's like I think he might have a ranking. But he's just getting built up. I think that's what they're gonna do with me. Yeah, so you don't think you'll get a top ten. No, but next I'm fight. not fuck that. I'm not fighting a top ten on the money, I'm on lad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so that's, that suits you as well so you've got that business strategy to them yeah I'm not fighting like yeah, I yeah, yeah. No getting paid Nick, Nick Peter and that was saying um, he'd like to see me against Tony Ferguson and lad I'd like to see me against Tony Ferguson mm -hmm. but not on the contract I'm on now fuck that I'm getting mind. paid that money to fight Tony Ferguson lad yeah he's still a killer man yeah he's still, still one of the best 155s in the world lad I want fucking six figures lad if I'm fighting him 
Fuck that, mate. Start getting seven now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Fuck the wall, mate. Here's your mug, those bastards, mate. But again, brother, like, buzzing for you to come on today and tell your story. Like, a lot of people get inspiration. You're, you're, you're hot property, man. And this is only the beginning of your journey for where you're going to achieve, mate. The fight at Anfield, you're going to win the belt. Like, I see it all for you as well. Like, I, I do. I've, like, people say the word destiny. I've seen me destiny. I know what's coming. You know what I mean? Even when I've been low, I've always believed it. There's only been a few times where I've had thoughts of like an MMA and that where I've seen in my own future, me lifting a belt, me winning an on-field, mm. that I know it's all coming, lad. I know for a fact it is. Yeah, that's class, man. Guys, like, because I, I, I love like Nate Diaz in it. I know he's not got the best of records, but it's his mentality as well that like, People love to pay to watch him fight, man. Even yeah, though he's fucking more losses than anybody. Like, I did, in MMA, like records don't mean as much, yeah. especially like don't win as much as boxing. Like mm -hmm. records just don't mean as much. Lad. Is like, anybody Diaz saying? has been fighting the best in the world consistently for like mm -hmm. ten years. So some of them losses, most of them losses against high level guys. Yeah. Can't really moan about it. Same like Masvidal. People go on about his record, but. All those losses are good fighters. Half of them are split decisions. Yeah. Diaz, man, he can't even put that bastard down, man. He's fucking takes some. Yeah, he can't. He takes some punches, to Diaz. To the, like. to the head, man. Like, it's unbelievable. The punishment that you guys take, like, people don't... It's not just a, uh, getting fit and try to cut weight. It's the mental battle as well that like, these have to fucking go through. Like, it's, it's next level stuff. That's man. what I've always been good with, like, the mental side. Always. Yeah. I've always believed in myself, even since I started doing it. I've always believed that what I could be and what I could achieve and I'm starting to do that even more and more. I've always done it since I was younger. Like mm -hmm. my mental side has got me through a good few fights and a good few weight cuts and a good few fight camps. Yeah. How do you stay humble then? How do you stay foot in the floor now that everything's kinda of exploded? I'm just me, lad. Just be you, just fuck everything else. Yeah, I'm just me, lad. Mm -hmm. I half let it go to me head a bit when I was twenty one and I won that belt. Started doing daft shit and They'll never happen again, lad. Even when I'm earning millions and hundreds of millions of pounds, lad. I'm, I'm just, as I say, I always say I'm just me, lad. But mm -hmm. I am. I'm just me. That's like, why you're I'm loved. A, and I know the money won't get to me head because I'm half a tight cunt myself, lad. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. I'll walk a shop round the corner to get a can for 80p instead of a pound, mate. <laughs> I think that's the best way, though, mate. Like, money's precious, isn't it? Yeah, it is, lad. I can't wait till the money's no object, though. And I know I'm going to get to that point. When money is just an object. Yeah. The thing I like about yourself, Paddy, as well, that you, sh you share like, a lot of charities, you share like, a lot of people try to get help, and, and that's the best thing because that's the, the key to life as well, is trying to help other that's people. That's what we should use our platform for, yeah. lad. That's what, like, we've got that many followers. Mm -hmm. We need to help people who need help. That's that's what I, the way I look at things, lad. Like, if I was them in that situation, would I want me to share it? Yeah. Share it then. Yeah. <laughs> That's simple. Is there any name that you know it's going to start calling you and start talking shit about you? Um, nah, there's a, there's a few of them already, lad. Starting. Um, are we talking about MMA fighters yeah, or any anybody? Oh, lad, there's still, there's always there's always lizards about, lad. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's proper mushrooms in this city that hate me, and they just do hate me. Like whether we've been on the wrong side of each other over the years, I've said something about them, and they'll always continue to hate me, lad. But Mm -hmm. Look at me now. Flying. Who's, Sitting across from me, mate. You know who's, life is good, bro. Who's, who's in the better position now, lad? Yeah. Me or you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> For anybody watching, brother, like, like I say, you're an inspiration from... I know you love all the kids in Liverpool and all around the world now, but for anybody that's maybe going to want to be a fighter, what advice would you give for them? That's the same as I always give for anything, lad. Believe in yourself. I always say you can't be a fighter if you don't believe in yourself. When people ask me, oh, do you reckon you'd, do you reckon you'd beat Poirier or do you reckon you'd beat McGregor? I say, yeah. Because why wouldn't I? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't I beat him? Serious. Like, why would I think in my own head that someone else could beat me up? That, like, if, you, if you're in MMA or doing MMA or even doing any fighting sports and you think anyone can beat you, you're in the wrong sport. That's for, like, footy and rugby team sports, lad. Where, like, like last night when Liverpool were playing, you're like, yeah, you know, Liverpool are going to slap these now. Norwich turned up there, just knowing they were getting slapped. And you can't do that in a fight. Do that in a fight and 
what happened with Cowboy and McGregor happens. You cower up in the first 30 seconds and get your head punched in. The, the fight sport's a different, lad. You've yeah. got to look at it like, I am the best in the world. Simple as that. I truly believe that. Yeah. Pori, I think he's probably the, one of the best fighters in the UFC just now. Like, yeah, he is. I think he's going to win the belt. Like, yeah, he's I gonna, think so. He's Oliveira for the belt. I've got a feeling they could ask me to fight on that card. Yeah. And then after Because it's got a crowd, hasn't it? Yeah. Where, where do you think the next fight will be? I think it's going to be have a crowd, like. Yeah. They're going to want to put me on with a crowd. That's up. Definitely, man. Like, like you're fucking, you're the main dog now, man. Yeah, like, you do. They're going to want to put me on with a crowd and like hear the noise of my warhouse and that. That hundred percent, I know they will. Yeah, but, class. Uh, I, I was thinking they could come to England before the end of the year, but there isn't even really any weekends free where they could just throw it on there. Mm-hmm. So they'll probably come back to England in like March or something now. That's big plans, man, big visions. And would you like to finish up on anything, brother? Huh? <laughs> As I say that, I'm, uh, I'm very chilled, lad. I'm, uh, I don't need to say nothing about anyone. That's the fucking best, brother. You know, Paddy, that's listen, for coming on today, brother, and telling your More story. Than well, I enjoyed it, mate. And I can't see, I can't fucking wait to see. Thank you, you very much. I've enjoyed it as well. Oh, Thanks for having me. Brother. God bless you. You bro. know that, fella. <laughs>